Now you've seen the basics, you might be wondering, well, how is this stuff going to appear in the exam? Well, if you take a look at the length of this video, you will rightly surmise that it doesn't appear in that many ways. And this is mainly because there's only really straightforward recall tasks that they can ask you to do with the information that you've been given. You'll find this type of question dotted around for the odd mark here and there, but the real meaty questions on this topic arrive when you've done a little bit more learning. Never mind, let's see those one markers then. This is a WJC past paper question and all it's asking you to do is name the logical operator that's represented by the truth table that they've given you. For one mark, if you don't know the answer, you can try and work it out. There are only four operators or gates that you need to know about and that's the not, and, or, or XOR gates that we've already looked at. Pause the video now and see if you can work it out. Let's take a look. Well, it looks like we're getting an on output when either A or B are on, so that sounds like an OR. But when both A and B are on, we're getting a zero, an OFF. Now there's only one gate that does that, and that's our friend the XOR. Notice you get the mark for either naming the operator or showing it as an expression, but seemingly not for just the symbol on its own. And this is why it's always worth checking the mark schemes, because how many people would have stuck that wonderful plus in a circle down on its own and got the dreaded zero marks? On to another, and yes, it's the same question, but this time it's a different truth table. Again, pause the video and have a go at this yourself. There's absolutely no shame in getting it wrong, but having a go is important for the learning process. This truth table only seems to give us the output 1 when both A and B are also 1. So which of our logical operators gives an output in that circumstance? If you said AND, then you'd be right. And once again, you'll see that they accept the written name of the operator or the expression, but not just a dot on its own. That's it for the past paper questions in that style. There's really not a lot more they can ask until you know a bit more about the topic and given there are only four logic gates to know about, you've seen literally half of all the possible questions they could ask you at the introduction section. 